Physics students, good afternoon. Mr. Pugh here. Uh, so in this video, we're going to be picking up from our previous problem where we left off. Uh, here, we're looking at forces acting at an angle on an object, and we're looking to find acceleration. So if you haven't looked at the first part of this video, or if you haven't worked the first part of this problem, uh, it would probably be a good idea to stop, go back, watch that first video, or work through the first part of the problem so that you can catch up to where we are. A lot of what we do here is going to be picking up from what we did previously. This problem, okay, we're looking at forces acting on an object with one being at an angle. And we're looking to find the overall acceleration of our object. So we've done some work to find our acceleration in the x direction. And now we're going to do the same thing, but in the y direction and figure, what we, figure out what we need to do at the end to find our final answer. So here, okay, what we're now going to do is analyze our forces in the y direction. And fortunately for us, if we look at our free body diagram, we just have one force in the y direction. That's going to be our y component of F2. And it's at an angle, so previously we split that force into its components and found the x and the y component of that force. So in the y direction, I'll come over here. The only force I have in the y is our y component of F2. And that force, according to Newton's second law, is equal to my mass, or the mass of our object, times its acceleration. So we realized in the previous problem that F2 in the Y is the same as F2 in the X because we're at a, uh, the force is being applied at a 45 degree angle, so our components will be the same. And we found previously that F2 in the Y direction was 42,992 newtons. I made a small mistake there, my apologies. So I'm going to take that value and I'm going to plug it into my equation. 42,992 newtons is equal to our mass here, which is pretty large, we have a big sailboat, 22,400 kilograms, times our acceleration in the y direction. So really similar to what we did previously, now to find my acceleration in the y direction, I'm going to divide, to divide our mass on both sides. So I'll divide by 22,400 on both sides of our equation, I'm getting a little bit cramped for space here, my apologies. The mass will cancel out on the right-hand side, and we'll have a, a more direct way to find our acceleration. So I'm going to plug in our force, 42,992, divided by our mass, 22,400, and I'll get an acceleration in the y direction of about 1.92, our units for acceleration, our meters per second squared, because we made sure to plug in newtons and a mass in kilograms. So now we have our two components of acceleration, x and the y. So the question becomes, what do we do with them? Do we just add them together? Well, kind of a yes and no to that question, because we do need to combine these values, but remember, we treat acceleration as if it's a vector. It has a magnitude, a size of our number, but its direction is also important. So we can't simply just add these values together. If you've done that, you've probably already made a mistake. We need to take these vectors and use what we know about adding vectors to find our overall or our resultant acceleration. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to draw these out in a way that looks a little bit more familiar. We have an acceleration in the x direction that's negative. Negative 0.508 meters per second squared. And meaning we have an imbalance in our forces that's going to cause our sailboat to move in the negative x direction. We also have an acceleration in the y direction that we just saw for to be 1.92 meters per second squared. All that means is that we have an imbalance in the y direction that's going to cause our object to move in the y direction. So overall, we have an imbalance to the left and up, which is going to cause our object to move kind of in this direction, right? Somewhat northwest. We don't know exactly what angle, what degree, but we know it's somewhat northwest because of what we've done previously. And we're being asked to find what is our overall acceleration. So, we're going to model these components as vectors. And to add vectors, we don't simply just add them together. We need to use what we know about the Pythagorean theorem. So what we're gonna do is take those two components and plug them in to find our overall and resultant acceleration. So, I'm going to take 1.92 squared plus negative 0.508 squared and that should give me my overall acceleration squared. So we'll take 1.92 squared plus 0.508 squared. 
Remember, when we take a negative value and we square it, it should be ultimately a positive. We're multiplying a negative by a negative. And you're going to get a value for a squared, be careful here, okay? looks like about 3.94. But remember, we need to take a square root of that value to find our overall acceleration. So if I take a square root on both sides of our equation, I end up getting something in my calculator. I'll plug in of about 1.98 meters per second squared. So that is how we would find our overall or resultant acceleration. Now that number does seem to make sense logically because it's larger than the other two values in our vector triangle, right? Our hypotenuse there, our resultant acceleration, should be the largest of those three values. And according to what we found, it in fact was. So here, we're not really doing anything brand new, we're just applying what we know about Newton's law to finding two parts of acceleration and then using those to find our resultant. Okay? So again, your numbers are going to look a little bit different. You're gonna have some different forces and maybe a different mass, but the process is going to remain the same. Remember, we always start drawing out our free body diagram and then using Newton's law to find here our acceleration. Okay? Good luck.